So greetings to all. Uh, my name is Margarita Krisaki, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the fifth webinar uh, on education and training in the space sector with a focus this time on gender equality. Today, we will be exploring the challenges, essential skills and opportunity that women encounter in their pursuit of a career in the space industry. To provide valuable insights on this subject, we have invited um, our um, four accomplished women with extensive experience in the field uh, of the space sector. And uh, we uh, are very uh, glad to hear their views on that. Uh, but before we begin, and since I see new uh, comers in our webinar, I would like to draw your attention to Nereus' efforts in promoting education and training in the space sector, as well as promoting space-based careers education for women. Um, I would like to share my slides very quickly. Okay, I think everybody can see the slides. Um, for those who may not uh, be familiar with our purpose, Nereus is a space organization that explores the advantages of space technologies for European, and reg for European regions and their citizens, and also seeks to encourage the use of space and uh, its applications. We address uh, our mission through uh, three main pillars of activities, advocacy, political dialogue, um, interregional collaboration and partnership, and new trends public outreach. We are a network of 23 European regions and 33 associate members. And there, uh, in, the, in the group of our associate members, we have many research centers and universities, as you can see here. And as, uh, as you can imagine, education and training is key thematic for our, for our network for this, for this reason. We have a strong ac academia community and multiple training stakeholders, uh, not only within our network, but also outside our network and also uh, collaboration partnerships. The subsequent uh, two slides provide a clear explanation for why regions require a skilled workforce to facilitate the conversion of satellite imagery into practical information across a broad spectrum of public domains, ranging from agriculture to civil emergency and others, of course. Regions are pivotal in the utilization and procurement of space-based applications, products, and services, and for this reason, they need trained workforce to support the process. And this is a very uh, representative slide of, uh, of what, I, uh, what I mean. Nereus continues to be very active in the education training uh, um, field, of, uh, especially with uh, whatever is uh, relevant to young people through various projects. As most of you know, we were involved in the um, in many Erasmus Plus initiatives. EO4GO is, is the biggest one. Now it continues as an alliance. And uh, now we are part of the advisory board of Universe. Uh, it's, an, it's an another Erasmus Plus project. It's a coalition comprising of five universities aiming at establishing a fresh and, innova and innovative mode of cooperation in the field of space. Um, the initiative is spur spearheaded by the University of Toulouse, uh, which is situ situated in the founding region of Nereus, Occitania. Uh, organizing pertinent outreach initiatives is another means uh, through which we demonstrate our commitment and contribution towards enhancing capacity building skills. This includes visits to universities to promote the use of space, um, the organization of this webinar, education and training in the space sector, but also participation to other relevant events across Europe. Our last exhibition, um, Space for Our Planet, it's also something that highlights the role of women uh, in, the, in the space sector. Um, Nereus is a co-sponsor of, of this initiative. It's a mobile exhibition of 25 portraits of um, a, a, a young, um, of young people, including women, uh, that they share their stories on how space technologies contribute to an ecological uh, transition. But more about that, we'll say our, uh, one of our next speakers, Fiorella. So I won't say much here.
Now, the most interesting part uh, for the, of the presentation, Nereus is an organization that consistently emphasizes, emphasizes the crucial role played by women in the space sector in various ways. Um, one such example is that Nereus uh, is a partner, was a partner in the Space Girls Space, Exhibi uh, Space Women uh, exhibition, which concluded uh, at the end of uh, 2020. The primary objective of this exhibition was to raise awareness about educational and training opportunities in the space sector that are specifically targeted towards girls and women. Um, then, of course, uh, here I have to say that the Secretariat of Nereus uh, is uh, composed of three women. Uh, Roya Yazi, Ms. Roya Yazi, our Secretary General, myself, uh, and uh, Hayat. Um, in addition to this, um, I had the privilege this year to be appointed as a mentor for Space of Women. It's an initiative uh, led by UNOSA, and we will discuss it in the next uh, webinars. Um, above all, ah, before I jump to this slide, just to mention here that Nereus is a proud member of Women in Aerospace, and we will have the president of Women in Aerospace together with us uh, in a few moments. Um, and of course, um, what we should not forget is that Nereus supports uh, all powerful women in um, uh, in space at the regional level, uh, whose contribution to regional development through space utilization is significant. Uh, as an example, I can refer to our management board members, um, Ms. Rosen Maresal. She's also, I think, she's also she also joins this uh, webinar today. Um, she represents Brittany region in the management board. Ms. Perdita Tepur, she represents Hesse region in our management board. And Eva Yankar from Matsovia region. And uh, in the past, Nereus had uh, in, in, in its management board as a vice president, uh, a woman, um, uh, Berbel Deisting. And of course, uh, we have through many projects and through many initiatives uh, mobilized uh, the interest of many uh, women politicians that are based in our Nereus member regions. Uh, and for that, you can find more information uh, on our website. Uh, the webinar schedule for today will, will primarily concentrate on gender equality and skills. Nonetheless, we acknowledge the importance of other factors that uh, impact diversity, such as age, ethnicity, and cultural background. But for that, we will plan to organize additional webinars uh, and address these issues in the future. Ultimately, this webinar will underscore the crucial contribution of women in the space sector and explore ways to promote education and training to attract more women to the field, as well as uh, assess that the essential skills required. So let me stop, allow me to stop the presentation. Before I invite the first speaker, I would like to remind you to put the questions in the chat. Uh, and uh, we monitor it uh, constantly. So our first speaker uh, is Emma uh, Bousquet. Uh, Emma Bousquet is responsible in the education training uh, in Serema. Um, she represents Serema. Serema is a French uh, research organization and associate member of Nereus. And today she will share with us a few words uh, regarding the situation on gender equality and skills uh, in uh, her organization. Please, Emma, the floor is yours. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Emma Bousquet. Okay, I'd like to go back. Um, sorry. Okay, sorry. So my name is Emma Bousquet. I'm a satellite image processing engineer with the CEREMA. So CEREMA is the French center for studies and expertise on risks, the environment, mobility, and urban planning. Um, so uh, what do we do? So we are a public agency for adapting to climate change and environmental transition. We are more than 2,500 
people across the 26 sites in France, uh, so mainland and overseas. The turnover is 240 million euros and 80% is funded by the French state. Uh, who are our main clients, um, so mainly the central states, but we also work with uh, private companies, uh, local authorities, public bodies, and also for European projects. And in 2021, uh, a new organization uh, was created uh, in order to focus really on the adaptation to climate change. So this is now the core of all our activities. So regarding our activities, we have uh, six areas of competence, uh, regional expertise and engineering. So this is uh, urban planning mainly, uh, building, mobility, transport infrastructure, environment and risk, and sea and coast. Then regarding the, the Earth observation, so we have at CEMA uh, one group uh, who works in the Earth observation. So this group is based in Toulouse and I'm, I'm part of this group. So we are about 10 people and we are specialists in uh, satellite image processing and analysis and also in geomatics. So what do we do? We access to images and we provide this access to, to our clients. Uh, we compute uh, image processing and we produce uh, several maps, derived data, indicators, etc. Um, our applications are more um, urban planning, environment and risk, and sea and coast. Um, and our clients are mainly collectivities. Um, one word about Copernicus Relay, so you may know about that, but we are a Copernicus Relay. That means that we can transfer information and questions from Copernicus to the users or the opposite. And also we develop the website, the website Applisat, um, which aims at providing information about um, satellite data, satellite products, how to access them, uh, what can we do with them, etc. So it's in, in order to, to inform um, public bodies and, and people about how satellite works. Regarding the, the role of women at Sahama, um, so we are a, a French public agency, so we have a non-discrimination policy and a strict gender equality with regard to equal pay, terms and conditions of employment. But we don't have quotas for, um, for the, the the number of women uh, hired. So regarding the statistics, uh, I observed that we, we are 36% uh, of women at CEREMA. But in my group, in the satellite imagery group, we are 50-50. Uh, and one word about uh, a gender equality plan with, which were, was released in 2021. Um, so it's a, a new plan uh, which aims at um, increasing the mixity in Serema, so to recruit more women, um, to help a better conciliation between professional and personal life, and also provide a strategy to combat sexual and sexist violence. So this is a, this was a last year plan, and we don't have um, today the, the results of that, but it's it's really taken into account. Um, and that's it. So if you want to, if I can share my, my personal point of view about, about Mixity, uh, of course, I think that Mixity is, uh, is really beneficial at work for human relationships, but I'm not really in favor of strict quotas because as a girl, when I see in a job offer the sentence, we encourage applications from women, I, I start to, to feel disabled, you know, and I never felt that being a girl could be an obstacle in my career, in the spec sector, in science in general. But when I read that, I, I start to think that it made. So it's, I'm a bit uh, confused about that. And also, once you're hired as a girl, you can wonder if you were chosen because of your skills or because you are a girl. And I think this is really bad for self-confidence, you know. So maybe I'm, I'm thinking that because I'm fortunate to live in uh, developed countries where gender equality was earned many years ago. Um, and maybe if I lived in another country, such as, I don't know, Iran or Afghanistan, I would think uh, differently. But anyway, that's it. Thank you for listening to me.
I was muted, sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much, Emma, for your uh, great expectations. Um, maybe you can stop sharing now uh, the presentation and also for the um, uh, many interesting points you raised um, and sharing with us your thoughts about this, uh, this subject. We really appreciate that. Um, a question from my side, uh, so the audience is also welcome to, to ask questions and then I will um, uh, share them with uh, with Emma. But one question uh, coming from uh, from me is uh, regarding the skills needed in the in the in the sector in, in the sector you're working at the moment. Um, are there any skills we identify more in women than men? Uh, or the opposite. Um, is there an explanation for this from from your experience working in Serema? Yes. Um, so the necessary skills to work in the earth observation sectors are mainly mathematics, physics, computer science, um, and they are more seen suitable for men as all scientific matters. But I don't really know why, actually. Um, so I think if you want to change that, we really need to to highlight uh, women who work in this sector, in the media, or I don't know, you know, to, to provide uh, examples to follow, you know, because I think if you can see it when you're a girl, then you can start to feel that you, you're able to do it. So I think it's about really images and examples, but we are um, really capable of, of of working with mathematics, computer science, and etc. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emma. We will come back uh, to you uh, after the the other presentations. Next, I would like to welcome Fiorella Coliolo. Fiorella Coliolo uh, is the organizer of uh, many successful exhibitions, one of them being Space for Our Planet, where in which Nereus is a, is a partner, is a, is a sponsor. Herself, she is an astrophysicist uh, and she has a, um, a, a great uh, career in the space uh, sector. Most of you know Fiorella. Uh, now, I would like to give the floor to you, Fiorella, to say a few words uh, about the exhibition and the role of women there. Um, it would be interesting to, to listen to you. Yes, thank you, Margarita, and thank you to all of you. Um, so I will um, introduce very briefly uh, the exhibition. So as um, uh, Margarita mentioned, uh, I'm an astronomer by background, but since uh, uh, 20 years, more or less, I work in the, the communication um, field. And uh, I'm very interested in all the issues related to diversity and inclusion. And from my side, I, um, as, Manu, as Margarita mentioned, and the Women in Aerospace Europe, I was uh, one um, uh, that launched the local group in Paris of, um, of WIA. And I was also in um, uh, director for corporate members. And at that time, Nereus joined, in fact, the, the association. So is uh, diversity and inclusion is really uh, at the core of my activities and uh, um, we uh, created with uh, the other curator Benoit de Planck this exhibition of space girls space women uh, also uh, we had a strong support from Nereus for that um, and the main partner was the European Space Agency and now uh, last year in, um, we launched this new exhibition of space for our planet I want just to share one um, uh, image that uh, um, uh, show you the uh, the role of women in our uh, um, exhibition. Uh, I will try, but uh, it worked before. But now I can. Yes, it's here. Let me know if you can see. Okay. Yes. So, um, uh, so Space for Our Planet is an exhibition uh, created by myself and uh, Benoit Del Planck um, um, a few years ago, and we launched this at the European Parliament in Brussels, October uh, 21. So um, there, um, uh, we have the patronage of UNOSA, 
and uh, we have the European Space Agency and the European Commission as uh, uh, the funding partner of the project. And then we have uh, many partners. Nereus is uh, one of our uh, partners and also one of the first uh, partners to join this exhibition. And then we have five, uh, we, we, I mean, we grew up during uh, the time. In fact, we started with 25 testimonials. Now we are 35 testimonials, including women uh, from a different background, um, uh, different um, skills. And uh, the goal of the, of the exhibition is uh, to show concrete examples on how space, technology, and application can help to reach the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. So uh, this exhibition is a photo exhibition, and we uh, we are very, uh, let's say, careful and sensitive to have a balance uh, among women, um, men, but also um, the diversity in terms of skills. It's also important for us to show the diversity of the, um, let's say, the, the, the job diversity in the space field. In, in this case, um, uh, for example, we have astronomers, um, we have uh, um, oceanographers, we have artists, uh, we have students. Um, and uh, when we launched the exhibition in Brussels, then we launched the exhibition at the Observatoire de Paris in Paris, where uh, Roy Ayasi from Nereus was there with, uh, to, uh, to have testimonials about this exhibition. And uh, we also had uh, um, a very important, uh, let's say, example of young uh, um, uh, audience, because we had uh, uh, 20 uh, girls and boys uh, between 10 and 12 years that are studying uh, space and sustainability in, uh, in their class. And uh, um, one of the young uh, girls uh, is one ambassador of sustainability in space. This was very important for us because this means that we can touch also the, uh, the young um, audience. And, uh, um, uh, and also there the, the was very interesting the debate because we are very uh, sensitive to the, um, to the fact that we can inspire with all these role models the uh, young generation in uh, STEM um, activities. So this exhibition is traveling uh, in, uh, in Europe and beyond because after Brussels we and Paris, we had uh, the um, Living Planet Symposium in Bonn, in Berlin, then we the City of Space in Toulouse. We were in Rome um, at the United Nations in New York last October, because uh, the topic of the World Space Week was uh, space and sustainability. So we had the exhibition there with all our partners. And uh, uh, now um, we have next, uh, let's say, next stop of the exhibition will be uh, in cooperation with Portugal Space in Lisbon. The exhibition will be there during, uh, in, I mean, we needed to, the day to be confirmed, but the idea is to launch the exhibition 22nd of April uh, for the Heart Day. And then, uh, in fact, I, I'm, I'm here in Puglia today in Bari because they, yesterday we, with Benoit de Planck, we signed this uh, agreement and collaboration with the University of Bari. And the uh, Puglia region, by the way, is one of the full members of, of Nereus. And they will have, uh, we lost the exhibition in May. And uh, they, they, we start um, a tour in Puglia. So this, uh, this is, um, is uh, the exhibition. Uh, in, in all the topics that we have in the exhibition, we try to highlight this role of, um, of, um, of women. And uh, if um, we, you have time, or if you already know this exhibition, this is a multimedia exhibition. So you can listen the testimonials of the actors on our website, or you know, when you visit the exhibition, you have a QR code, and you can have access to the different testimonials. So, and I just before to to close this uh, this um, my my uh, let's say my speech here. I just want to under highlight the fact that all the uh, all the these women, but all the actors of the exhibition, they had one common questions in their interview. And one was, what is your message for visitors of space for our planet, and in particular for young visitors? 
uh, and the other was related to the diversity. And all the testimonials say that when you have passion for your job, for the space in this case, it's not a matter if you are men or women. You just go uh, to um, uh, try to to follow your dreams and your passion. So they say it, even in the previous exhibition of space girls, space women, we have different testimonials. Um, and the, let's say the the feel rules that if we follow our passion, we try to go beyond any kind of barrier in terms of diversity. Thank you very much, Fiorella, for your uh, uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, one question that um, I, I have now, uh, and also what uh, it's based on what you just said, um, what was the response you got from women as well as from men um, f f sharing this key message? Yeah, diversity. I mean, they all, they think is that, uh, uh, of course, as we um, as we know, as we also we read in different uh, in, in the literature, that uh, the access to STEM education uh, at the at the age of the you say university is uh, almost the same in terms of women and men. Then they think change at the top level. Because we know that for different reasons, the statistics show that the, we have uh, uh, at the top level we have more men than that women. So this can be mm, given by different uh, factors. What uh, the testimonials show is uh, that, uh, for example, there is we have a testimonial from um, uh, a lady from Pakistan for example, and uh, she explained in the in her interview, in, in, in their exhibition, she explained how difficult for her was uh, um, um, to uh, follow her passion for space. She's now, to, she's now as a space educator. So she, uh, their message is, okay, the system cannot allow me to be a space educator. I will create my on work alone. So she created a kind of uh, association where she works with young audience. And you know that uh, so you have also, let's say, uh, social... Uh, um, in, uh, in, in Pakistan, it was not, it's not, the, it's not very easy for a young lady to, um, to, to, to work in this field. So this is... Uh, uh -huh. so if you have a passion for something, you can do it. To um, and then we have another um, testimonial it's, uh, from an astronomer. Um, she um, is the, it's the first astronomer in the West uh, Africa. And uh, one message from her is that it's very important that your family uh, support you in your choice when you are... Uh, 15 years for example so two factors are important passion for space the support of your family and to try to go beyond the um, this barrier and um, uh, so this is very important so and we are and also they think that at the top level we have more women uh, they are they think are now changing even if we are a bit far from the equality let's say Thank you, Fiorella, for sharing these uh, inputs with us. Um, and uh, we really, um, for those that hasn't um, that haven't um, uh, seen the the exhibition space uh, for our planet, we invite them to at least visit the website. Maybe Fiorella can put the link of the website in the chat. Yes. And there. And there you will read the individual stories, uh, including uh, stories of uh, young, uh, of we, of women, of in, uh, of entrepreneurs that are uh, also women. Um, and that no, is also have, very uh, uh, just to add one thing, just one yes. thing. From the Reus point of view, uh, we have two stories. One is yes, uh, from, our from German. Exactly. Uh, she created her own comp uh, company um, uh, thanks also to the Isabik incubation center in Germany. Uh, and she's very young and uh, very successful. Um, I can put, uh, we can share in the chat also the interview. And then we have another testimonial from the Puglia uh, region, from the president of the DTA, Giuseppe Cerno, that uh, 
uh, I mean, his, uh, his uh, interview highlight how uh, the regional environment can be important to uh, stimulate uh, jobs, skills. I mean, in, in, uh, at the regional level, where there is an ecosystem of innovation, and thanks also to the collaboration with Nareus. So this is important to share. There are two important testimonials of Nereus in this um, international exhibition, and we hope that we have more and more in the future. Thank you, Fiorella, and we invite everyone to have a look at this exhibition. It's really it's a valuable work being done there. And uh, thank you, Fiorella, for sharing this with us. Maybe you can stop sharing the presentation so we can give the floor to the next speaker. In the meantime, I would like to mention that Nereus was also a, a partner to an Horizon 2020 project called Coordinate. And there, our responsibility was to manage the distribution of a big budget uh, to regional initiatives for the promotion of uh, Earth observation um, and Copernicus uh, activities. Uh, one of the one of these initiatives um, it was called Women in Copernicus. And um, uh, today we have uh, a, a partner of this project, uh, Aida Monfort Muriach. She's also a researcher and developer in Geotech. Geotech uh, stands for Geospatial Technologies Research Group uh, in the University of uh, John Primero, if I say it cor correctly, Aida. And uh, she will explain to us what is this project about and key highlights of women working in the space sector. Uh, the floor is yours, Aita. Okay, uh, thank you, Margarita, for your presentation. I'm also a member of the, of the Women in Copernicus team. Um, I would like to present you this project. And um, I, our first, our aim was to to give them to give the women working in the Copernicus sector a voice and, and a face. And as Margarita said, we got a budget from Cordinet and after that uh, we worked on a voluntary basis. Our initial idea was to make a survey to gather these women stories and in summer of 20, of 2020 we launched our first survey. Uh, which contained 54 questions divided into five questions, into five sections, sorry, demographics, background, barriers, facilitators, and women in STEM. And it was a success. We were uh, very surprised to get so, so many answers in, during summertime. And um, so we continued working with these women because some of them provided very, uh, very interesting answers to the open questions. So the next step we did was to make some video testimonials uh, with these women. Uh, these videos, uh, you can see them our, on our website. Later, I will share the link. And after that, we realized that we also needed uh, to include men in the survey so we could compare the, the situation between women and men in the sector. And then we launched the survey 2.0 which was launched, uh, which was open for two months, and here we got uh, less less response. The main results of the surveys are um, that mainly women who answered are from the STEM background, and they are from academia. Um, we we translated the survey into six languages to try to, to reach to local and regional levels also. But uh, mainly, mainly the respondents were from, from academia. Uh, and they uh, were very satisfied with their jobs in the, in the ecosystem. In the survey 2.0, we got similar results from, the, from women's answers, but we we anticipated this and uh, it's very hard to to get uh, men men participation if the project has women or gender in the title and we got very few few men few men's answers uh, roughly like 80 answers from were from men the main uh, barrier perceived from women as is uh, being being the, the minority um, we asked how much uh, women were were working in their organizations, 
i in the sector and uh, during their studies. And these are the answers we got and uh, more than the half of women are working with less than 30% of women colleagues. Uh, working or, or studying with less than 30% of women colleagues. And this is also a fact that you can see here in the in this uh, UNESCO pipeline, leaky pipeline, <laughs> because uh, this is the, the academic path and in each step you can see that there are less, less women. And also motherhood is uh, perceived by many of them as a career stopover. These are the, the average um, uh, answers to, to these questions that were rated from, from one very low to five very high. And for example, we were asking about the, the technical skills here and, and the hierarchy. And uh, as we can see here, uh, job satisfaction, technical skills and expertise are more or less perceived uh, the same. By, by women in the first survey, in the second survey, and by men. But the hierarchy is uh, slightly uh, more uh, perceived, perceived higher by, by men. So we can conclude here that even if women and men have the same technical skills and expertise, uh, are always men uh, occupying higher positions and leading positions in, in their organizations. And that's all uh, from my side. I would like to thank to thank the supporting organization and the the amazing team that makes this project possible because we are working all in a voluntary basis, and and we did a lot of efforts to to make it possible. And here you can see our social media, especially in Twitter, we are very active, and uh, we have a lot of resources on our website. So I invite you to check them. Thank you very much, Aida, uh, for your presentation. Uh, I had the pleasure to collaborate with you in many EU projects uh, in the past. And um, I would like, since you, you have all this EU experience, I would like to ask you uh, what elements should be highlighted uh, in EU projects to better embrace the role of women, in your opinion? Yeah, um, uh, another, uh, I mean, one of the, another of the barriers that uh, we, we got from this survey is uh, being the minority, uh, the gender bias in the workplace, and also the lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this one is uh, something that uh, could be addressed uh, by, by like programs like this you presented or projects like this, uh, networking, uh, mentoring, I think all these all these uh, actions uh, can help uh, women to to gain more confidence and to overcome this imposter syndrome that we sometimes have. So having uh, also having role models. Uh, in leading positions in, in projects uh, are, are, uh, are a good uh, initiatives to, to, to make more women uh, being confident. Thank you very much, Saida. Um, maybe you can stop sharing the presentation so we can give the floor to the next speaker. Uh, and now we uh, listen, we heard uh, views from women working mostly in the downstream sector. Now we go up, we go in the upstream space sector, and we have today with us uh, Miss Nasi Fermoylen. What can we say for, for Nasi? She's an astrophysicist, pilot instructor, founder of the Space Training Academy in Belgium. Now she's a stakeholder manager uh, in Flanders Einstein Telescope and a president for Women in Aerospace. Nereus, just to remind you, is a member of uh, Women in Aerospace for many years and we support uh, their activities. Um, please, um, Nancy, the floor is yours and we are looking uh, forward to your um, uh, uh, views. I will share the presentation maybe and uh, then you can uh, start. So hello everyone. Um, so my name is Nancy Vermeulen 
and today I'm going to represent Women in Aerospace, uh, the Brussels uh, Belgium uh, sector. Because, you know, Women in Aerospace is an international uh, organization. And um, in Europe, there's also a very strong uh, activity. And Women in Aerospace wants to increase leadership capabilities and also visibility of uh, women in the aerospace community. Because we have a lot of uh, talent um, in the pool. But as I heard already before, women sometimes um, yeah, restrain of um, yeah, get visibility and uh, get um, visible in order to make promotion. So I think it's important to acknowledge and promote individuals um, as well in order that they promote in the aerospace uh, industry. Now, women in aerospace also comprom uh, comprises men, of course, because we don't want to discriminate. Um, the only thing you need to have is a, is a passion for the aerospace uh, industry, which includes uh, human space flight, but also aviation, remote sensing, satellite communication, robotic space exploration, and also, of course, uh, policy uh, issues and so on. So about uh, Brussels uh, Belgium department, um, let's say during Corona, we didn't do a lot of activities, which we want to increase. We want to network uh, to find our new members. So we did a uh, first meeting after New Year and a second one already uh, last weekend in Antwerp. Um, the, the point is that we uh, want to collaborate more with other chapters in, uh, within Europe. Can I have the next slide? Yes. So um, the educational part, I think it's very important because the younger that um, girls can identify themselves with role models, the more they will fi uh, find confidence in order to continue in STEM fields and also in the aerospace um, uh, studies like physics and uh, civil engineering. I think, for example, if you look at Italy, we have the Chris, uh, Samantha Cristoforetti effect there. Um, Samantha Cristoforetti is a very successful uh, European uh, astronaut who was also commander of the International Space Station. So I think this is really what, what we need. Huh? Um, unfortunately, we didn't manage to have a female astronaut uh, yet in uh, Belgium, but also I hope this will change in the near future. So, yeah, let's say about the Space Prize Foundation. It's something that we include for secondary schools in order to support uh, educational e equity. And also, of course, we work together with A0 in Belgium in order to support uh, education initiatives uh, for high school uh, students. Okay, the next uh, slide. Um, we want to support a strong uh, network, and I see a lot of other organizations which are very active in the promotion of women and also want to reach out to them and uh, collaborate uh, more. Um, also with the international collaborations. For space and schools, I already mentioned that we are promoting very much in our um, group the possibility of becoming a space teacher because all the women that we have in our group are very strong um, uh, persons. Most of them have managing positions in the aerospace uh, sector, and each of them is a role model. And um, let's say our first Belgian astronaut, Derek Freemout, he uh, created an initiative which is called um, Space Teachers Belgium, which is based on the idea of Christa, Christa McAuliffe, who uh, died in a Challenger uh, accident in the 80s. But um, I think we, you, you don't need to become an astronaut in order to become a space ambassador. So we want to give um, these people a status of being a space teacher so that they can, besides doing their job, also from time to time um, give a lecture in a school, online or in real life. About diversity and inclusion, I think uh, we cannot um, support the fact, uh, we cannot stop uh, supporting the fact that we really need role models um, from all colors, from all age groups, on all levels in, um, in the aerospace sector. And one of my big um, examples is Sian Proctor. Um, she was the first black uh, woman to pilot a spacecraft. She qualified as a high qualified uh, NASA astronaut, but she was not um, chosen. 
but by doing her own thing, by being, being a very inspirational um, uh, person, she got the chance to fly with uh, Inspiration4, huh? with uh, SpaceX. So I think there are a lot of possibilities and we need to uh, take them. I thank you for your attention. And thank you also, Sabah Shakir, for making this very nice presentation. She's a co-leader yes. of Brussels, uh, Belgium. Thank you very much, uh, Nancy and Saba also, that supports uh, women in aerospace. Um, uh, before I move to the next speaker, Nancy, I have a question for you. Um, uh, you have implemented a very successful and you continue space-based uh, career. And I would like um, to ask uh, from my side the following question. Um, obviously, uh, you, you notice that uh, more and more women jump into the space sector. Uh, however, the question here is, what are the chances for these women to get a higher position? Um, what is your opinion on that? It depends on the company. Some companies are very aware of um, the certain issues that women are encountering. They're very open-minded and uh, they gave them opportunities. They do mention mentorship, mm -hmm. but not all companies. So it depends, it depends on the depends philosophy on the... of the company. And this is where the gender equality plan, I guess, also plays, uh, plays a role. Um, then I would like to ask uh, all questions. I also check the chat. Uh, if someone would like to, to ask a question, then you can type it in the chat. Um, then I would like to ask the question to, to the speakers, a, a bit more general question, and it's very much connected with what Nancy replied just now. We noticed that in many international uh, and in particular EU organizations, such as uh, ESA, for example, or international such as UN, the United Nations, uh, this organization encourages applications from women. However, what is the situation at regional and local levels? How would you characterize the situation and also why? Whoever would like to take first the floor, please do it. Okay. Yes, Nancy, yes. Um, I was very surprised to learn within Women in Aerospace that my country, Belgium, is not very, is not doing very well in um, aerospace engineering jobs for girls. I was really surprised because we have the um, reputation of being a very open-minded uh, country for diversity, for uh, not heterosexual people and so on. And even then you don't see um, young girls growing into the civil engineering jobs. But um, in contrast, I see Italy, Spain doing the opposite. They're doing very, very well. So even if your country is open to diversity, it doesn't mean necessarily that people are um, going into these fields. That's very surprising to me, actually. And it's also a question uh, addressed to many levels at the end. Um, so it, 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 it depends on many factors, actually. Uh, thank you very much for your valuable comment. Um, before we continue, uh, would another space woman like to, to comment on that? I mean, what, um, from my experience that uh, is uh, for the previous, is not uh, for the two exhibitions, once it was really focused on space girls, space women, space seen by women, uh, at the local level, if I speak for Italy, for example, um, the statistics, statistics show what I already mentioned in, mm -hmm. um, at the beginning, that the problem, I mean, the, the, the difference of the, the, the numbers uh, uh, comes at the top level. For sure, the effect of the astronauts that uh, can be Samantha Cristoforetti, okay, because she's I mean, of course, but in general, they are very inspirational. But one, one of our messages is that you can inspire, uh, but we have a, a very, very, uh, very different uh, opportunity in the space sector. So, uh, at the level of uh, university, women, men in STEM, they in Italy, they have more or less the same um, 
presence. It's what change is later. So it's important to show that, of course, astronauts they are inspirational, but we cannot be uh, astronauts, all of us. Exactly, so exactly. It's exactly. important to show that you have a passion for uh, for uh, the sea. Okay, you can be, uh, you can uh, study oceans. You can uh, you can be an artist. We have the example of. Uh, um, Michelangelo Pistoletto in our exhibition for the, the sustainable development goals related to peace because he was, um, uh, I mean, for it, the, his uh, uh, third paradise, he was one that made the, the logo for the, the, the astronaut, the, the astronaut mission of Apollo Nespoli. We have also a, a, an engineer working with the civil protections so this means that if you can be also you have a passion for other kind of things you can work in the space field so maybe if we want to change a little bit the statistics at some you know, some point it's important to inspire and to show that you your skills can find we look at to work in, uh, in the ex in, uh, in the space please mute yourselves I don't know it's uh, uh, there is some uh, yeah dynamic. yes yeah. okay so this is was uh, Fiorella no for Fiorella this is a very viable comment what you say and we always need to think about space as a broker an archaeologist for example can work with space data can acquire skills yes, uh, we can learn how to interpret satellite imagery it doesn't have to be a space engineer uh, and focus only on that. Now we also see that space engineers have to acquire also soft skills and have to know about policies as well. Yeah. Uh, this so why, mm -hmm. Sorry, this is why in the image that I shared with all of you, we don't have the name of the person because it doesn't matter at some point. If you want to know more, you go on the website. We have the background. So we have the archaeologists working with the earth observation data for the cultural heritage. So we have people working in the, with the fireworks for the disaster. So it's important to show that you have a passion for one of these sectors, you can work in the space field. So it's why it's important to show that, uh, that message that I share with all of you. Exactly. Space is open to everyone. Thank you very much, Fiorella. And now I'm eager to, to receive a male perspective uh, on our discussion and on the status of women's participation in the industry. So I extend a warm welcome to Mr. Emmanuel Pazo. He is the Secretary General of ERSC. ERSC, ERSC stands for Earth um, um, for a European of the European Association of Remote Sensing Companies. Uh, Emmanuel, as you represent the voice of uh, Earth Observation Space Companies, we are also curious to hear your thoughts on gender equality in the space industry. Um, the floor is yours. We are honored uh, having you here with us. Thank you, uh, Margarita. Um, it, it's a very important topic, uh, for sure. Um, one day I have to represent the association and one day I have to represent what we do uh, in the association. Meaning that, um, do we represent currently uh, the current situation uh, of the Earth observation downstream industry within the Secretariat? Unfortunately, not in a way, or hopefully not, because currently we have four men in the Secretariat and, and five women in the Secretariat, so more women than men. So it's not exactly what we see currently um, in this industry. And um, what really strikes me uh, over years, uh, over let's say 10, last 10 years, is that the, the percentage of uh, of women in the earth observation downstream industry we could say to be positive slightly increase yes but increase by two percent only in, in 10 years so it's really 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 small compared to uh, all the different uh, changes i think our society has uh, already uh, seen um so the big question is, is why why do you have this uh, lack of of diversity um Obviously, first thing could be the hiring uh, process practices. Um, it is possible that there are some uh, unconscious bias, um, but uh, this will imply uh, a lot of different uh, consequences and, and risk. Um, currently, all companies are really challenged to um, identify the person in order to uh, fulfill the the job they they want to to hire somebody and um, there is really a lack of resource 
And uh, if uh, such a bad practice in their hiring practice are in place, then obviously we have to, to fight in order to, to leverage them. But then the big question is why do we have potentially less women than, uh, than men in, in the application form? And um, this will impact all of us. Um, just to give an example from the Secretariat, um, at ERSC, uh, we have currently two women in a board composed of 12 uh, directors. And uh, I can tell you, it is really um, uh, a process to, uh, to mobilize women as well to, uh, to apply to this. And each time I, I interact with them in order to understand why they didn't apply, uh, I have really different kind of answers. But generally, as you said before, um, people, have the women have the feeling that they are not legitimate somehow but I can reassure that uh, they are fully uh, legitimate. And um, we need to have uh, more women at all level in order to uh, ensure that we have a consistent and realistic uh, view of, of the ecosystem. Um, this is not only in the industry, uh, it's more maybe at the social part. And it's really a pity to see that uh, the Earth's observation and, uh, and space at all, upstream, downstream, are seen as, as a male dominating uh, system. When we think that uh, in, uh, in 63, uh, Valentina Tereshkova was in space, uh, it's really amazing not to have more women in this, uh, in this industry. Uh, furthermore, I would say from the Secretariat point of view that what I really appreciate is that thanks to this diversity, thanks to these different views, we collect uh, and have access to different approaches which can be much more beneficial at the end. So all will benefit from this. And for sure, uh, a key element is men. Women have to, uh, to play their role in this uh, gender balance as well. Uh, and that's why I think men should be much more involved. And when I heard that uh, men were not uh, responding to, to the surveys, this is really uh, something we have to work in because uh, they are part as well of, of the solution too. Uh, we need to all together develop a better way to, uh, to stimulate the, uh, the integration of women at all level, um, but men as, as well uh, play a role to play in order to change maybe their, their approach. Um, yes, uh, for historical reason, maybe uh, women are much more connected to the care and so on, but uh, I think the last few years, we have seen a lot of different changes in the society with uh, a work-life balance, which has to be uh, reinforced, revisit uh, in a way. And uh, so maybe more men should as well express their, their thought about this balance they would like to find too. So it is uh, a common goal for, for a common aim. Thank, Thank you, you Emmanuel, um, for this great input. Um, I think I share your uh, your uh, your final point on the, on the fact that it has to be a change coming from the social grounds, and now we witness this this kind of change, although with slow um, uh, uh, so slow steps, uh, but we 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 approach to that level of having more women in the space sector. This is what I want to say. Um, um, anyone, uh, does anyone have uh, a comment, a question for Emmanuel? Uh, just uh, one question because yes, I follow yours, um, ask, so I know uh, that you have a very um, large, let's say, activities for the, um, the sustainable development goals. Uh, you um, were carrying out uh, uh, um, a study, I think, to, it was related more to Earth observation, I guess. Yes. Um, so, do you have, it's just, uh, now it's my mind, do you have um, any, let's say, uh, for the SADG related to the gender, of course, but in the context of the Earth observation, uh, Earth activity, do you have any uh, testimonials or maybe a role model that uh, can fit in this, uh, in the, I mean, in the frame of gender, but in the earth observation activities. Uh, I will be honest. Uh, no, we do not have so much uh, example, but I think this is clearly something that uh, we should uh, we should develop. Absolutely, this is something that we need to uh, to cover. Yeah, because it's focus. interesting to match the I mean the different background in the in the, in the frame of the earth. Uh, 
uh, activities associated and uh, industries uh, and uh, and then with the uh, sustainable development goals uh, related to gender education maybe to map i don't know no, I'm, just, I'm very like I, I mean i like to launch new ideas but the conversation and the discussion is really interesting and the I was in contact with the, with you, I mean, with your team, because I think it's very interesting what you're cutting out, so. Thank you, Fiorella. Uh, I had a comment from uh, Teresa. I don't know if she's still with us. Uh, she says that um, I definitely encourage all women to apply for senior roles. However, this is again, making women having the responsibility for resolving the issues. The change has to come from the top to step down and leave space for a diverse voice. Uh, yes, we, I think we already shared our comments here. Uh, uh, but I wouldn't say just from the top to step down, uh, because if there is a change in society, it comes from the ground as well. Uh, but it's good that it has to be supported by all uh, levels and uh, from all views. Uh, then I had a, another comment from the same person uh, saying, and I think this is for you, Aida. Uh, she says, sometimes running activities that contains the word women in, it excludes men in attending, who perhaps should be there to hear and be aware of the issues. Um, just be, maybe before you say something just a comment from my side um we need also to know what is a webinar or an activity about so i think the the word women or or men i don't know it has somehow to be mentioned uh, anyway um gender equality it's a it's a it's a subject that um maybe can can sh be shared in the in the in the wording it's something that also refers to to both genders maybe Aida, you have something to to share on that yeah as i already said it is it's difficult to engage men and um, we we are in our internal meetings we all we also discuss that because um we started as women in copernicus and <laughs> And uh, maybe that's why not many men respond to the to the second survey. But I don't know because uh, we widely spread that it was open for everyone, and um, and then didn't didn't respond that much. But yeah, it's an issue that uh, we have and we don't know how to solve. <laughs> how to maybe. Call, it's it's yeah. something for your next activity uh, to to better uh, to to better deep into that. Uh, from my side, what I would like to highlight, uh, also representing Nereus, is that the promotion and dissemination of any kind of space activity goes to everyone, and that it, that doesn't exclude, of course, um, anyone. Uh, I think uh, since we are close to the end, um, I would like to thank the speakers uh, and the audience uh, for, uh, for their attendance and for the preparation of all this work. And I would like to finish with uh, to end uh, our discussion with a final comment. Our next webinar will be on the 17th of May. And it's a quite interesting webinar because it has to do, it's very connected with what um, uh, also Fiorella mentioned before, uh, the interdisciplinarity of skills in the space sector. And uh, space policy skills, it's something um, uh, very, it's something significant uh, for all people in the space sector or also in other uh, domains uh, to take a look at this. Um, and our main speaker will be Simonetta Tipipo. Simonetta Tipipo, uh, I think all of you know, she was also the, um, uh, in the United Space Nation, uh, the Secretary General of uh, UNOSA. Uh, and now she's a professor in, uh, of practice uh, of space economy, uh, economy in the Bocconi University in Italy. Uh, and we will be very uh, pleased to have you uh, next time. So please uh, uh, register yourself. I shared the link in the chat. Uh, and uh, looking forward to see you all there. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you. Thank you, Margarita. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much.
Thank you.